Hi, I'm Tristan from the School of Synthesis, here with five important things to know about Ableton Live. So if you're new to Ableton Live, these are five things which will help you get started making music as quickly as possible. Or if you're already using Ableton Live, maybe we'll pick up some tips as well. So let's get stuck in. Number one, session view versus arrangement view. Perhaps the number one most important thing to know about Ableton Live is that it consists of two separate views representing two different types of workflow. You can press the tab key on your keyboard to switch between these two views. Or you can click on either view's icon in the top right. The icon with the horizontal lines is arrangement view. It represents the more traditional linear recording view. And the icon with the vertical lines takes you to session view, which is the more unusual non-linear recording slash performance view. In the case of arrangement view, when I say linear, I just mean your song has a predetermined start and end point. So when you press play, you'll hear the song play from the start to the end in a linear fashion. This is how most DIW or recording programs operate, and it's also how most recorded songs function. So if your goal is to publish your song online, maybe somewhere like Bandcamp or SoundCloud, Arrangement View is where your song will need to end up eventually. Session View, on the other hand, represents a non-linear song arrangement, so you decide at any point how the song starts, how it ends, and everything in between, without being fixed to a regular song structure. You do that by launching these colorful blocks called clips by clicking on their play buttons. I have these all set to loop, so once you start them, they'll keep playing until you tell them to stop, which you can do by pressing any of that track's stop buttons. I should note that clicking on a clip with a mouse is just one way to launch clips. A more practical way is to use a hardware controller like Ableton's Push, or a Novation Launchpad, or any MIDI controller with pads. But you can introduce a bit of structure by organizing clips into rows called scenes. Then you can launch a scene by clicking that scene's launch button. Number two, helpful panels. Ableton Live's interface is very customizable with all sorts of panels on the sides of the screen, which you can easily show or hide. I'll talk about this browser in a minute, but for the moment, I want to talk about two other helpful panels. The first one is called Help View, which you can show and hide via the Help menu and then choosing Help View. It has a range of detailed visual guides to help you with things like setting up your audio interface and setting up your MIDI controller. And there's also a great demo song which shows off a bunch of the new features of the latest version of Live. You get there by clicking on what's new in Live 11, because that's currently the latest version, and clicking on Live Set Here. And lastly, there's Info View here in the bottom left corner. Info View tells you a bit of information about whatever your mouse is currently hovering over. Like now, it's telling me what Info View is. I've been using Ableton Live for a long time, and I still find Info View to be tremendously helpful. Sometimes you may need reminding what a particular button does, but it also points out some nifty keyboard shortcuts. For example, it's telling me I can use spacebar to toggle play and stop. By default, this always takes you back to the beginning of the track. But it's also telling me I can use shift plus spacebar to continue playback from wherever I stopped. Which can be very convenient. So InfoView is full of useful information and you can quickly show and hide it by pressing the question mark key on your keyboard. Number three, detail view. Like Live's other panels, you can show and hide this big panel at the bottom. However, it's usually showing some pretty useful information. So you'll generally want to keep this one open unless you really need the extra screen real estate for editing or something like that. This bottom bar is called detail view. It will show you one of two different things. Clip view shows you information about the currently selected clip 
and device view shows you all the live devices and plugins which have been added to the currently selected track. So things like virtual instruments and effects. When you're just getting started, it can be a little confusing figuring out which view you're currently in and how to switch between the two views. Let's say we have two tracks, a MIDI track and an audio track. I'll just add a MIDI effect to my MIDI track and an instrument. And I'll create a MIDI clip just by double clicking in an empty slot. Now I'll add an audio effect to my audio track and bring in a drum loop. Now let's say I want to add some notes to our MIDI clip. The most intuitive way to do this is just to double click on that clip. This will indeed take us to clip view and we can see what's going on inside the clip and we can add notes just by pressing B to enter drawing mode and then adding some notes with the mouse. Now that we're in clip view, if we want to take a look at a different clip, such as this audio clip, we just have to click on it once. No need to double click because we're already in clip view. Now with this audio clip active, what if we want to go back and tweak that audio effect we just added? Well, we'll need to move back into device view. And given that our mouse is already up here and in this track area, the quickest way might just be to double click on the track's name. Now we're in device view and we can mess around with our audio effect. If we want to tweak the devices on our MIDI track, we just have to single click on that track's title bar because we're already in device view. So that's one way to move between the two views, but double clicking does take its toll on your joints after a while, so there are alternatives. One of which is to use the two selectors in the bottom right. The selector on the left takes you to clip view, and the selector on the right takes you to device view. But these view selectors can feel like they're a long way away, especially if you're using a big high resolution monitor. So there's an even simpler method, and that's using the keyboard shortcut of shift tab. This will just quickly switch you between clip view and device view. At this point, you're probably already pretty comfortable using tab to switch between the two views, session view and arrangement view. So adding the shift shortcut will probably feel pretty comfortable. So it's the method I recommend. Number four, browser basics. I mentioned before that the panel on the left is called the browser, and aside from recording, the browser is the main way in which you'll bring content into your live set. The kind of content you'll bring into live could be a variety of different things, including virtual instruments, such as a software drum machine or software synthesizer, or virtual effects like reverb or a virtual guitar amp. Now, if you've worked with any kind of digital audio software previously, you're probably familiar with plugin formats like VST and AU. Many companies, such as Native Instruments and Aturia, release plugins in these formats, and they're supported by a range of different hosts, including Ableton Live. If you're running Ableton Live on a Mac, you'll be able to use both VST and AU plugins, or just VST plugins on Windows. There is another plugin format, however, which is only for use with Ableton Live. Although these plugins aren't called plugins, they're called live devices. But you use them the same way you'd use any other plugins, although they are organized in live a little bit differently. All of your VST and AU plugins are housed in the plugins category, while all your live devices are organized into the four categories above. The first three, instruments, audio effects, and MIDI effects, are the official Ableton Live devices, so live devices released by Ableton themselves. You'll see a number of different devices here, depending on which version of Live you own. Live Suite, for example, comes with a huge number of live devices, including soft synths like Wavetable. Live Intro comes with fewer live devices, but it still includes some great instruments, such as Simpler and Drum Rack. If you find the entire list of audio effects a little overwhelming to see in one big long list like this, then you can right click and choose group in folder, which automatically sorts them by category. If you're looking for a virtual instrument and know the kind of sound you're after, but aren't sure exactly what instrument to use, then you'll find the sounds category extremely useful. These are all the presets from the devices found in the instruments category, except sorted by sound type and not instrument type. So one preset from the synth lead category might be a wavetable preset, while another may be an operator preset. They both just happen to be synth lead type sounds. Activating the preview switch will let you preview sounds just by clicking on them. Or you can leave it off and scroll through the list with the down arrow on your keyboard and use the right arrow to preview. Live Suite also includes a program called Max for Live, which can be purchased separately for live standard owners. Max for Live includes its own category, which includes three subcategories. Now, Max for Live is an incredibly deep program that lets you create your own live devices. You just have to decide what sort of device you want to make and open the appropriate folder. For example, the Max Instrument folder contains at the top of the list one blank Max Instrument device for making your own Max Instruments. 
and beneath that is a list of all of your saved Max for Live instrument devices. Now there is a lot more to be found in the browser, so if you do want to learn more, you can read all about it in the live reference manual, which is linked to in Help View. Number five, recording basics. Before you begin recording, you should make sure you have your audio interface and your mini controller all set up. If you need some help doing that, you can refer to the setup section in the help view. If you don't have an audio interface, you can still start making music just using your computer's built-in sound card. Macs generally work fine as they are, but if you're on a PC, I'd recommend downloading a program called ASIO for All, which is linked here in help view. This will help minimize latency and generally improve audio performance when using your PC's built-in sound card. If you don't have a MIDI controller, then you can simply use your computer's QWERTY keyboard by activating computer MIDI keyboard mode from the options menu, or by pressing the M key on your keyboard, or by clicking on the piano icon in the top right hand corner. Now you can use your computer's keys to play virtual instruments. Keep in mind your computer's keys aren't velocity sensitive, so they won't react to how hard you hit them like a piano would. So it's not the most expressive way to record, but it's still surprisingly useful when you just don't have anything else handy. The next step is arm your track so it's ready to record and choose your monitor mode. I'll talk about recording audio first, and then I'll move on to talk about recording MIDI. I've got a keyboard connected to input 7 and 8 on my audio interface, so when I play some keys, I can see some activity there in the input section. When I record Armour Track by pressing the Arm Recording button, several things will happen. First, I'll be able to hear what I'm playing and see the audio metering next to the track's faders. Plus, all of the empty clip slots on the track change from having stop buttons to having record buttons. So all I need to do is choose which clip slot I want to record into and press record. But record arming a track also affects how we monitor a track. In other words, what we're hearing coming out of a track. I have my track set to auto, which is the mode I suspect people use most often. But I'll quickly talk about the other two modes first. If we change the monitor mode to off, we aren't able to hear what we're playing. I'm playing some keys and I can see some metering next to the fader, but we can't hear anything. We can, however, still hear clips we've recorded or added to a track. But I can't hear anything I'm playing, even if I press record. So I couldn't hear what I was playing then, but it still got recorded. So monitor off mode is great if you want to be able to hear clips playing back, but definitely don't want to hear what's being played into a track. Monitor in mode is basically the opposite of off mode. In this mode, we can hear what's being played into a track. For example, this is me playing the keyboard. But we can't hear any clips that are playing back. So in mode is great if you want to ignore any clips that are present on a track, but exclusively want to hear what's being played into a track. Then auto is the mode that I mentioned before. And like I say, it's probably the most common mode. Auto mode tries to intelligently decide what should be heard based on a few variables. First, if a track is not record armed, we will be able to hear clips playing back, but we won't be able to hear what's being played in. If a track is record armed, we'll be able to hear what's being played in, provided no clips are playing on that track. If we launch a clip, we'll no longer be able to hear what's being played in. But this only applies to clips playing on the same track. If we move a clip to another track, we can play that clip and still hear what's being played on our other track. And lastly, if I'm recording, I will be able to hear what I'm playing, but I won't be able to hear any clips playing back on the track because Ableton Live can only play back one clip at a time per track. So you can't record into one clip slot and play a clip from another slot on the same track at the same time. So that's the basics of audio monitoring and monitoring MIDI recordings works very much the same way with one small difference. I'm just gonna add an analog instrument to a MIDI track and record a quick synth part.
Now if my track is record armed and monitor mode is set to auto, I'll still be able to hear what I'm playing even if a clip on the same track is playing. So this is different to an audio track, where in the same situation I wouldn't be able to hear what I'm playing while the clip is playing back. So that's just one little difference between audio and MIDI tracks when it comes to monitoring. So thanks very much for watching, I hope this has been helpful, please leave any questions down in the comment section below and stay tuned to School of Synthesis for more videos coming soon.